tribute as on behalf of the workers of the Forum of Saulo and Monica Frasoni, European Green Party, Pierre Logan, left party, but unfortunately she, he has had a problem and will close in behalf of Sirica Janis Milios. You have the opportunity to listen to him before. The general coordinator of Esquerra Alternativa, John Josep. Be companions y companions. Dear comrades, good afternoon, everybody. I would like to take advantage of this opportunity to repeat what I was saying before. Today, the people of Barcelona, people of Catalonia, people of Catalonia, Esquerra Unida, we are very happy. We are happy that Barcelona becomes the capital of the south of Europe, happy to host so many things, green, red alternatives, especially from the south of Europe, but also from the north, happy that social organizations, social movements, activists of all type are here today in Barcelona, given this first forum of the south of Europe. I uh, was joking before, saying uh, we have made a salad because there is a lot of everything here. There are some people that I have to remind you that we've been fighting a lot, but happily we've learned from history. And for the first time today, the Greens, the Reds, and the alternatives of the left of the south of Europe are hand in hand. And today, we start the change. This event, friends, we've done it for many reasons. First, because we are going to put white on black, a series of proposals which will help us to have a coherent speech and a project, a project which is built from the experiences of the south of Europe, but it's not in the south of Europe, it wants to change the whole of Europe. And this alternative model, the Troika, is developing for the European project. Therefore, today, we are gathering strength. And besides making proposals, we are becoming stronger, strong in our moral, our will, our decisions uh, to fight till the end, and today we start a change here in Barcelona, but in 48 hours in different places of Barcelona and Catalonia, we will be opening our cava bottles, uh, because Syriza will have won the Greek elections. Amics y amics. Friends, people here know that we come from far away and that we are going to move beyond because we've been fighting for region, for generations for transformation and many many of us thought that one day we would be living a year in which transformation is possible and transformation will start in 48 hours in Greece and then it will continue and let's see if we have to fight for elections in the uh, parliament in Andalusia. And in May, we are going to celebrate that in Barcelona, um, the left is going to take the city council. And Barcelona will be reinforced. Barcelona will win with the left party and not only the city, but its people. And in September and November, the opportunities for change are possible. And people here, people from left parties, uh, green people, can have a place in the Generalitat, in the regional government, because Rajoy and Mas are the problem, and we are the alternative, as well as you. From the south of Europe comes the change and the hope. And as I was saying before, we are putting forward proposals. We are going to choose. We are going to choose to be part of the change. Or <coughs> sometimes maybe 
we feel fear. And I propose that we don't have to doubt. We have to participate in the change because we are change. No doubt about this. And in Europe, we discuss whether we are going to be in transparency or democracy or are going to allow that uh, treaties negotiated with the states involving labor rights. This is not democracy. It's a secret that we cannot uh, allow to happen. We want to know what's being negotiated in the name of uh, Europe's people. and. Are we going to allow to have 20 million unemployed people in Europe and that the social European project that started after the Second World War is seriously damaged? But we are going to recover this uh, proposal, this kind of Europe, and a Europe of free people, free populations, federalism, not understood as a centralizing process, but a process in which populations decide and build their future. This is a contribution of Catalan people to this model of Europe. And I finish by saying, in Greece, a long time ago, it is said that democracy started. In two days, in Greece, democracy will make a leap forward, will boost, and Troika is shaking, Mas is shaking, Trias is shaking, Rajoy is shaking, and we are happy. We are very happy. I'll leave you with our friend and colleague, Joan Herrera. Good evening to all of you. It's a pleasure to be here. And it's a pleasure for one reason, because we are a great number of people from different movements, different parties, and I would like to thank you for being here. Javi Lopez, the socialist MP, is here, and I would like to thank him. But also people coming from socialist parties, such as uh, Vallès or Balsells, I would like to say uh, thank Paul Vilches and David, who come from uh, Majorca Islands, the Balearic Islands, or Juan Carlos from the Junta Aragonista, or people from uh, in Primavera Andaluza, and people coming from other places. Terra is going to talk about uh, Brazil, but we have people from uh, Uruguay. We have uh, people from Pueblo Democrático from Colombia. And people who live closer to us and with whom we work together. I can see here faces from Yayo Flautas who are working really hard to defend our rights. Feminists who are here saying that w women cannot bear the burden of all cuts. Ricard Riol also from Platform for Public Transportation or Luis Blanco from Ayat, who's with us, an activist from the education field, such as Rosa Canadell. Or I see here representative from the labor field. And I'm happy to have here with us Pepe Alvarez and Juan Carlos Gallego. Or when I see people in the neighbors movement helping the city and the neighbors to move forward, represented here by Luis Ravel. This is policy and street, movement and citizenship. This is what unites us. And we are people from the left movements, from the green movements, progressive people, social agents, um, social actors. But we are, before all of this, citizens. We are citizens from the south of Europe, from a country, Catalonia, which is in the south of Europe, as it is Spain, as Italy is in the south as Portugal, as Greece, as France. We are in a Europe when we are told that democracy and social rights are not compatible. 
And we are citizens. We are, as I say, from the left, green movement. And we were told before that the social contract was compatible with democracy, and now we are told it's not. What do we do? That's the question. And I cannot bring myself to believe that the education of my child will be better or worse according to the money I can pay. That if my father is sick, he will have a better care uh, if I pay. I cannot believe that we have to choose between being a poor worker because we are badly paid or being unemployed or being unemployed or going abroad. I can bring myself to believe that when I uh, see someone uh, sleeping in the street, as I saw with Aleka in the Thessaloniki streets, turn my eyes and think that it, this is not my business. No, I can't believe this. Democracy and social rights are compatible, and we have to fight for this. And as we are European citizens, and particularly from the south of Europe, and in the south of Europe, we are told that we are going to suffer for generations. What we say is, let's walk together. We have the fiscal compact, the obligation to repay the debt. As we have to repay the debt, and this is the priority thanks to the Article 135 of the Constitution, who put the banks before people, then it's the perfect excuse to monitor our life and make business out of rights. European citizens from the left, green movement, what we say is we must say no. And we have to put forward democracy. We cannot accept the plutocracy where markets lead. We are not going to accept to have our lives cut. And uh, we, as it has happened here in Spain, where sometimes we cannot express what we think. We are not going to become, become good. This is what uh, Samara's Rajoy or mass government are doing. Socialists in France right now are implementing policies that uh, follow austerity because what we are going to do is to impose fear and not doing anything. What we propose to walk together work together and have coordination among us to go further away, to find European solutions and think big. Work together in order to understand that there are no solutions only from Catalonia, Spain, or Greece, that solutions are collective, are shared. And we have to think big and think in Europe. We want to look at the world, and we can see that the inequality is increasing in all continents. There is a place where inequality is reducing. This is in Latin America. And we have to ask ourselves what has happened there. I think we have to be clear. In Latin America, the social movement understood that they needed to claim back policies, politics, because and they did it at the end of the 19th. And the Sao Paulo Forum, where we have PT, people from Cuba, from Chile, left socialists, and people representing Morales. They understood that they had to work together despite the differences. And they understood that they had to recognize the legitimacy of the other, that they needed to work together to transform the reality. And Latin America is the only place where inequalities are being reduced. And the question is, what are we doing in Europe? Do we walk apart? Political families continue their own way? Let's build a common space where we can walk together. 
but you know our rights are not respected and we have to react to respond we have to claim back democracy but we are not from Latin America. We are European, Europeans. And what we have to say is that Europe and the south of Europe, while well, democracy was conquered, was not a given. Sometimes it, uh, here it is as if um, democracy was given after Franco's death, when it was conquered in the street, when we achieve it. Um, thanks to the fight of the workers that wanted their children to go to university. Democracy was conquered fighting against Franco, against Salazar, against the colonel's um, dictatorship. And what we have to state that we conquered rights, and this is why they cannot be taken away from us. And we want to move forward and achieve equality in one of the biggest, um, of the most unequal societies in, within Europe, the societies in the South. Yanis has talked about this, restructuring the debt. Why? Because it's fair. And not just the debt. We need the writing off. Um, can be also a possibility. The debt is drowning us. And it seems that policies are dictated by the market. But when I say this, I'm told this is not possible. We cannot, they cannot tell us that the debt is because of us. They cannot blame on us for the debt. The European Central Bank has been lending money at 0.5%. And then there was a parity between Dragma, Escudo, Peseta, and Europe thought to buy German products and to over in -depth economies in the south of Europe. This is not acceptable. The economy in the south of Europe grew at 4 or 5%, and the interest rate of the European Central Bank was 1% in order to finance the growing of the German economy while they were supporting 7 million workers in poverty. So today, to have a decent proposal in terms of debt, we have to work together, walk together. We have to fight together. And this is what we have to do in the present situation. Merkel has mentioned, as an example, Mariano Rajoy during these days. She has mentioned the Spanish case. And the Spanish case shows the impoverishment of popular, uh, of, of working class. In the electrical sector, they have the monopoly in the financial sector from 2008 to 2010. We lost 100 billion. We have done major public works. Is this the example we have to follow? We have to say that we there are alternatives, which is working together. In the center of Europe, and Rui was, was mentioning it, the center of Europe is in the Mediterranean, in the Ulysses Mediterranean. The Mediterranean that invented democracy is the one that has to claim back democracy. There is a song by Luis Lac that talks about the Greek boat. And it says, Greek boat that has the grief, my grief, Greek boat you have to move forward toward the port. Europe starts on Sunday in Greece. Democracy starts with an alternative, with hope. But what we have to say is that Europe starts in, less, in next municipal elections. Barcelona is the capital of mobilizations against the war. It's one of the world capitals against war. Barcelona, from the municipal sector, has to be the space 
to claim back democracy. The challenge is to win, to win, to defeat Troika, Samaras, Rajoy, Trias. The challenge is to win in Greece on Sunday, in Barcelona in May, to win in Catalonia when we have elections in September. And what do we need? We need unity from plurality, the will to change things, unity, but not only something we say and we don't practice, unity to change from scratch the power structure that makes today that wealth is not redistributed and is concentrated in a few hands. So this is what we have to do. And today is a day for hope. It's a day to do this, to build from different perspectives, from different views, uh, the path in which we have to work together. I think it's very important that we understand that elections are not chess games, are not places where we can put flags. Elections is a, when we celebrate election, elections, we put at stake the happiness of people the happiness of people right now means to have a decent job. People is happy when they can change things and they don't have to obey. Let's do it. What we propose is to do this at our own way, fighting against the market dictatorship as uh, the people who founded Europe did. And this is the ones who fought against uh, fascism. Those who recovered democracy and not the ones that talking about democracy, what they do is to obey by the market. So thank you very much. And today with unity, plurality, with ideas to, and the will to change the world, what we have to say is that in, on Sunday we will win in Greece. Uh, and in September we will win in Catalonia, telling the Troika, Otria, Samaras, Mas in Catalonia, and Rajoy in Spain, that they are not going to bend us. We are not going to obey the market. Thank you very much. Yara. And now, I give the floor to someone who has six days left before his anniversary. Cayo Lara. His birthday is next Thursday, on the 29th of January. So besides congratulating him, and congratulating me because it's the same day, I give him the floor to my comrade and friend, Cayo Lara. Cuando lleguemos al gobierno, when we are part of government, the first measure that we are going to pass is to prohibit, to congratulate us on our birthday. I think in a place like this, uh, we have some social trade union force, especially political forces of the whole of the European Union, the party of the European left. I think there is a doctrine to follow, and this is something I like to repeat, but this is the key of many of the things that are happening and not precisely good things. We, of course, everybody is going to remember that today's malaise comes from previous things. And this dust was the Washington Agreement, the Maastricht Treaty, and the Lisbon Treaty. Those of you who are familiar with this know it because you were there. They are here. They have arrived to make states weaker and democracy weaker less state for a bigger market, to reduce public intervention in economy, to deregulate the markets. Now, with the Treaty of Free Trade, let's see if we organize a strong campaign to explain what can happen with this. 
and less skepticism on it as we had with the Maastricht Treaty. The regulation from the point of view of employment, flexibility, workers in the street, but workers who are on the street, there are other businessmen on the street, and when they apply the labor reform, they say there are no class, social class. When they apply the labor reform, they have dismissed hundreds of workers, 500,000 workers dismissed, 20 days of dismissal, and they should have done it. They should have not been placed at the door, but at least it should be 45. Then the labor reform did not lead us to a cheap dismissal with a country with one third of contracts less than 645 euros, and they say there are no social classes. Today I have the teacher, uh, which says Mondays in the sun, and it says Mondays in the sun, because in this country, this Catalonia, this Spain, this Europe, there are many millions of people who Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays are in the sun, Saturday and Sunday also. And occasionally, we have to think about this, we have to reflect on this. And we should think about the principles. And sometimes we forget about this in the dynamics that we have. To privatize the public sector, AENA has been sold, has been plundered. As we've said before, we plunder a company. They plunder a company which is cost efficient to make it cost efficient for other people and they will continue doing business and they will continue to plunder the state as they've been doing. We have less and less state, less and less public companies, less public sector, uh, less public banking. There was a lot of public banking in this country not long ago. So they place the political power at the service of the economic power. The economic power prevails. And they play with the political power. This has already been forecast in the Treaty of Maastricht. They, at, they, nam, they explode the social state, they increase inequalities, and all this in order to save the oligarchy, the bank, the financial powers, and the rich become richer and richer. This is a topic. And the poorer become poorer, and in Greece we see the number of poor people in the streets. We don't have to ask whether they're in crisis. We see it in the faces of people, unfortunately. Therefore, this is the roadmap. And this is the roadmap they're applying here in Spain, Italy, Portugal, Greece, some other places, even worse, beyond this north and south problem, beyond the problem of the peaks, as we've been called the countries of the south. And somebody was saying that before, it's not the north against the south. There's a working class in the north, working class in the south, many youth in Germany, many youth in Spain. We cannot forget this because this is very important to know. Having said that, let me tell you three brief quick things. Deficit, debt, BC plan and investment plan. Just a general reflection on deficit. If we enter more money than the one we spend, we have more debt. How do we solve deficit? There are two ways of solving deficits. First, with uh, bigger income, and then with austerity measures. And the bigger measures can be complemented with employment policies and more income for public income. Uh, in 2008, Zapatero was already saying that he didn't know what to do with so much money. 20,000 millions of superavit, he didn't know what to do with so much money. So there are two ways of doing it. And the neoliberal policies have decided that the formula is austerity and policies. And they have decided that in this country, 80,000 million euros, eight points of the PIP are of fiscal fraud. And these governments, they don't want to touch them. And yesterday we learned that the international companies in 2017, 2017 are going to be obliged to tell us how much they pay in the countries they operate, not only as far as tax. So we, this is what we are doing with international companies. So there is fiscal fraud. We didn't want to fight against this, so there are no income. Um, those who are in cheating, they are cheating all of us. They are cheating our social state, our pensions, health, education, and they cheat our 
lifestyle. They do not fulfill the fiscal regulations that we have, and they are not persecuted by governments. Aren't they uh, people who do not fulfill their obligations? So each one of us should pay according to what we have and according to what we earn. Is this a barbarity? Is this a revolution? Or is just applying many of the laws that we have as far as taxes? Spain, 31 article of the Spanish Constitution says so. And, uh, fiscal justice. But here we opted for austerity, unemployment, low wages, and economic worsening of the situation. This is why they apply the labor reform and the constitutional uh, court with the president who inspired the reform had just supported the labor reform. So we are fuck up. And if we have anything to do in the next government, if we have a parliamentary majority enough, this is our compromise. And the first thing we will have to do will be to cancel the reforms that we had. Debt. We should audit debt. We have to cancel debt. We have to restructure debt. And we have to face the interest of debt without going into debt for. We can do it. Well, I think we can do it. It's a question of political will. And for this, and this is included in the Barcelona Declaration, we will talk about the need to celebrate a European conference on debt, because debt is uh, drowning us. Greece cannot have 77% of gross domestic product of debt. It's impossible that this country can breathe. It's not possible. But those who have this debt, some of them are banks. European Central Bank gave money to one of them to buy that uh, five, six, and this is how we pay the interest of the debt. They have to think that they are in risk operation. When they invest, don't they have any risk? Risk is part of free economy, isn't it? And this is why they have to understand that there is risk when they invest in secure debt. But if they take away uh, health, education, and food, we will have to celebrate a debate with those who give us debt. And we have to have clean accounts, because if we uh, have a big debt and we have a deficit, uh, well, they will say, we're waiting for you. So we have to break this deficit. We have to end with deficit in order to have political independence. And this is not a barbarity. In some of the countries present here, we do not have a very high deficit right now. And this is something we can do, and we have to do. And we have to say that the interest is what is collected by some of them call us cost efficiency, speculation. We can call it no matter what. But the truth is that in this country, we're paying 36,000 million euros of interest to some people who landed money, 36,000 million, 100 million euros per day, which is the cost of building a hospital 500 bed with 36,000 bed uh, millions. If we didn't have to pay the interest, we can create 2 billion jobs every year. And if we create the two million jobs, don't you think we will have a takeoff of the economy conditions in order to pay the main part of the debt if we have a moratorium and restructuring of debt? Don't you think we will be members more able to pay? Why don't we face this problem of the interest of debt? I think we can do it. And I think this is a pending subject. And also, we have to adopt other measures. And many people are going to talk about this in Greece. We will have the opportunity to put this into practice. But now they will have to go back, and we will have to express our solidarity in order for this country to take off. 
Uh, but there are other things we have to do. The European Central Bank, in the end, is going to buy debt in secondary markets. More than 1 billion euros, more than the gross domestic product of Spain, is going to buy debt in secondary markets, and this can cause many things. Where was the European Central Bank before, where they lend the money to the speculators so they can speculate with the states and the suffering of people. It's not our bank, still not our bank. Someone who has not, who was not chosen by us is going to invest 1.14 million euros in buying the debt of the secondary market. In theory, all this should aim at the lowering of interest rate flow of credit, so companies have credit, uh, central bank, bankers, investors will have more money and they will have to invest. This is the theory they have. And the third one, they will have to lower the interest of the mortgages. In Spain and in Catalonia, there are many people right now who have a mortgage and they won't be able to pay the mortgage. Evictions continue. Uh, the evolution of the bubble, why people have such a big mortgage. People are evicted because the conditions were already created and this could be facilitated. But this is what we want. We want a public bank. We defend the public bank. And we had Argentaria. We had a local credit bank. We had the industrial credit bank. The public bank in this country. Why cannot we have public bank? We're going to defend it here and in the rest of the countries. Well, this competes with the free economy of the market. Well, let's compete in the free economy with the public bank. And in Andalusia, we have a very small government. And we are questioned because we are in the government as part of society. Each one is free to say whatever they want with this little bit of power. We've thought about this public bank. I don't know if this is going to happen with the Bank of Spain. Well, here is the real power in order to avoid a public banking system. Part of this country, 8 million people, because maybe this idea can be replicated everywhere, everywhere else. And they try to approve a law, a law to avoid evictions, but the power the unknown power move and made the government go to the to court, and people are still evicted from their homes. This is the power. And now the government of Catalonia is in crisis. It seems they're going to call elections. One colleague from Andalusia was saying that today they have just passed the law of historical memory in Andalusia, and a law defending the consumers in Andalusia and the law of historic memory uh, cause a judge, a judge to lose his job. And when we have this type of power, is that we are applying things that we don't like. That's why we theorize that one thing is government and another one is power. In Greece, we could have Syriza can opt for government. Power is power. And this is why we need lots of solidarity because they are going to find many obstacles in order to avoid the projection of a project which can be understood and extended to the rest of the European countries. That's why they need our solidarity. And finally, let me tell you that an investment plan, we won this investment plan of the European Confederation of Trade Unions, 2% of gross domestic product investment through the European Bank of Investment, 10 years, 11 million employees, uh, jobs, sorry. That's impossible. There's 1 billion euros of the European Union going to fiscal paradise. We don't want to join the Juncker plan. We want the European plan of trade unions. With these three, four proposals, for sure we can start building a different Europe with many more. But with these three, we can create a different Europe. So the European Charter of Fundamental Rights is like this. It's a format. It's not so small, of course. This European Charter was published by the European Union. And one of the articles says, and I'm talking about fundamental rights, we don't have it in our Constitution. The Article 15 says, 
professional freedom and the right to work. Everybody has the right to work and to have uh, the profession they have chosen. This is what the European Charter of Fundamental Rights says. People don't fulfill this. 27 million unemployed do not fulfill with these conditions. And this is written on the papers, but it's just a theory. So we have lots of things to do. We can do it with the laws that we have right now. But, and let me conclude with this, it's difficult for the left to organize ourselves. And it's difficult to work united. And we are the best. And we disagree when we have a small element to disagree. And the political and economic right, because the left exists and the right exists, they understand themselves with economic data immediately. Of course, they have not discussed with the privatization of INA. Who will have this 28%, 26% of the private sector? They have discussed who takes it, but they agree quickly. But we in the left, we have problems to decide. And this is what we are doing. When I see so many parties, so much plurality, uh, we agree against something, but we have to understand each other. We are building, trying to build this. And there is no reason to avoid or to make us not to apply this in our country. So we are at the time of autonomous and general elections. We can think the government, we can change the country, but we have to think about convergency and the unity of the left. Otherwise, we will make a mistake once again, and then the right will win again somehow, because they have a lot of power. Therefore, the reflection we should take into account. And it's difficult to reach agreement, but we have to make the effort to do it, because this is our obligation as men, women of the left. It's not impossible. In Greece, they have to win. And they, if they win, they should not fail, because otherwise it would be frustrating, not only for Greece, but for the rest of Europe. And that's why we have to help with all the nuances, possible nuances, with all the differences, with the differences that we have with Syriza or with any other political powers which can help us to change Greece. But we have to help because this is much more important. This has much more importance and value than the power we are facing in Greece. Therefore, this is the last message I want to reach. And let me conclude by saying that time for programs, time for hope, time for being enthusiastic, but time not to deceive people. Therefore, the programs that we're going to elaborate in the next elections have to be serious, rigorous programs, something which can be applied the day after winning the elections, because we cannot allow ourselves the luxury of deceiving or cheating people like the government of Rajoy has done. They promise one thing, and they've done the opposite, and nothing happens. The left cannot deceive the working class social majority. And if we cannot apply a specific measure because the power is very strong, we have to organize ourselves in order to defend the governments. And we have to tell people why we cannot apply this. We have to explain it. Somebody said that the working class should receive the truth. Therefore, go ahead. Lots of hope. Hard working, collective working, collective thinking. Good luck in the elections. Well, we are people who have bad luck, but we work a lot. We are not very lucky. It's not a question of luck. It's a question of working hard, although we don't conquer what we want to conquer at the specific moments. Therefore, let's apply the European Charter of Fundamental Rights. This could be a good message good conclusion of this declaration of Barcelona. So that's all I wanted to say. So I now go with my Mars and Mondays, and I give the floor to Terra Friedrich, Workers' Party of Brazil and the Forum of Sao Paulo. Bueno. Good evening to all of you. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for having invited me. And excuse myself because I'm going to mix Portuguese and Spanish. It's a pleasure to be here with you. 
I would like to share a message of enthusiasm and solidarity with the fight is taking that is taking place in the countries of the south of Europe, the most uh, affected by the crisis. I come from Brazil, and in Brazil and in other countries in Latin America, we suffered during the 90s the same measures and the same effects of neoliberal policies of the Washington consensus that were implemented in Latin America, in Brazil, and in other countries. So we went through privatization, wages cuts, the reduction of the state role and public policies, uh, public spending cutbacks. So we experienced that reality. This is why I think it's important to mention the experience we have. In Brazil, with the government led by the party of the Workers' Party, we had the experience of changing a little bit the reality by reducing uh, inequalities with 42 lifting people out of poverty, 42 million people creating 20 million jobs. But this wasn't only in Brazil. It took place also in other countries in Latin America with a different history in other countries with uh, left governments uh, that belong to the political family, the same political family. So we went through a very interesting experience of changing the situation despite the differences. So we were able to change and move forward. And this didn't happen only to individual countries. It happened also at the regional level, because together with these neoliberal policies for each country, there was in the 90s a project of building an area of free trade of the Americas, which was a little bit similar uh, to what's being negotiated between the European Union and the states, the TTIP. So this uh, project of the free trade uh, was a neoliberal project for Latin America and the American uh, continent. So the failure of this project was due to the mobilization of the less left parties, the social movement, the trade unions, of a wide coalition of forces and uh, social organizations, environmental organizations, that saw in this project of the free trade of the Americas, they saw that this was going to be the neoliberal project uh, with a lot of impact in the continent. So there was a strong mobilization. We celebrate the 10th years of the failure of the negotiations uh, for the setting up of the ALCA. So this was a historical moment. This happened when there were changes in government. We had Chavez in Venezuela, but then Lula took the power in Brazil, uh, in Uruguay, in Argentina as well. So this popular social coalition, democratic coalitions of the society together with the government, the political change in the government, this was the key for the success of all this movement that meant the failure of the neoliberal project for Latin America. This is why I think it's important. I wanted to share this point because I think we have things in common. There are fights that are similar. Uh, 
And to conclude, I would like to greet the greetings of the Sao Paulo Forum for this first forum for the south of Europe. So I'm going to read the greetings. Alexis Tsipras, President of Tsiritsa, Cayo Lara, General Coordinator of Esquerda Unida, and uh, Joan Herrera, President of the Parliamentary Group Iniciativa, and Izquierda Unida y Alternativa. Dear colleagues, the Working Group of the Sao Paulo Forum greets the organization of the first forum of the southern countries on the 23rd and 24th of January in uh, Barcelona and all its participants. The crisis which started in 2008 and the austerity policies imposed by the financial capital made the population suffer a lot with higher unemployment, um, bigger inequalities, and uh, cutting of public spending. Our organization has always stated that the crisis shouldn't uh, affect that much the population, but instead of this, have a strengthened, uh, a stronger Europe, but the Europe of the population. We celebrate the organization of this first forum, and we wish you uh, the ability to set up alliances uh, among the countries affected by the crisis in order to fight neoliberal policies. All the best uh, and all the success for you. Um, regards uh, working group of the Sao Paulo Forum. And finally, I would like to, on behalf of PT Brazil, to tell my hope Uh, for the victory of Syriza on Sunday, when this will be a, mean a change in the history of Europe. So I would only like to say that we are with you and we will celebrate Syriza's victory on Sunday. So now I'll give the floor to Monica Frasoli. Buonasera. Good evening. I was told before starting speaking uh, to speak on behalf of Pierre Laurent, who is the president of the European left. I don't know if this is possible. I think that what Joan has said in his speech, talking about the great diversity of movement people that we have here, I don't think it's necessary I speak on behalf of Laurent. In the left green European party, we are happy because we are part of an alternative and we want to be an alternative to the policies and people who are ruling the continent and many countries in Europe. Personally, and this is my liberal side, I don't believe in the oligarchy complot, or let's say that I don't only believe in the complot of German but oligarchies. I think that we have a real problem of credibility of our proposal, and we have a problem also of capacity to connect to reach consensus because otherwise we cannot uh, because otherwise our proposals and we've been hearing listening to our proposals they are strong they are coherent they are logical they are easy to implement but so far our proposals haven't been implemented and even if we like to be plural, we don't want to be uh, authoritarian. Well, the problem of powers, fighting other powers, have to be also our problem. I agree with Cayo Lara when, when he said that there is a powerful ruling class. Our role is to reach power. 
not make opposition with good proposals. And I'm going to deal with the three main questions. I think we can contribute to this debate. But beyond good proposals, we have to have a real action plan. Today, 23rd of January, what's the first point? Well, the first and the most urgent is that on Sunday, when Syriza wins the election, it has to be clear that they are not alone in Europe. And I would like to say it right away, and it's not because I agree with everything that Syriza says. I would like them to be greener. And in fact, maybe now they are going to be. But this is not the question. The issue is to create a correlation of alternative powers where we have people that think like us and that they are in power. And we, from outside the government, because the vast majority of us are not part of the government, we have to create a situation uh, by which national government, at least some national governments, including France and the government of the South, can contribute to implement all those proposals we've been listening to, and particularly the Conference on the Dead. And I would like to uh, talk how we are going to explain to Germans about the conference on the dead. Because we have to be clear, we cannot celebrate this conference without having a majority in the European Parliament, without having a little bit of support from the Commission and having only a correlation of forces with Syriza. So I think how are we going to prevent Syriza from being isolated? This is something that we have to think carefully about. This is important, and particularly in the European institutions where we work, and sometimes we consider them as boring institutions. But this is not true, because many battles concerning democracy and environment were fought and were won in these European institutions. I really like when Laia talk about the alternative uh, narrative. And I think that the, an alternative uh, narrative for the left, for the Greens, it hasn't to be sad. It has to be a recipe for happiness and for joy. And Syriza will win for this reason, because they have had the capacity to give hope that maybe we in other countries uh, in the south of Europe, we haven't been able to provide. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had Berlusconi for 20 years in Italy or other things we don't like. And I would like to insist on this alternative narrative, which is uh, um, valid in the north and in the south, and Cagliolara has mentioned it. If it's true that in Italy we are the first country in terms of poor uh, workers, well, Germany is the second country. So I'm happy to be here among people uh, from the south, but I'm not the periphery, and I want to discuss with my colleagues from the north. And it's something that we do with quite a success in the European Green Party. Three more things, quickly. I think that the recipe that we mentioned, and sometimes our colleagues from the left say, oh, Monica, but um, this green thing, it's not so important. What's important is employment, jobs. In some friends during the the campaign, the political campaign, say, well, it's important is job creation, and I think that the real green left party in the south of Europe 
has to put in, right in the center the Green New Deal, not because it's something beautiful, because we are going to save trees, but because this is the political industrial option uh, which is feasible for Europe. We don't have oil or not a lot of oil. We have wind, we have sun, and we have entrepreneurs, we've got workers, we've got builders that can and want to work with us, invest in these technologies that are not outdated technologies. These technologies are represent a new economy which is environmentally friendly. I think that some options that uh, some of our governments are implementing alone, for instance, when the Paris summit took place in Paris, said he was not going to subsidize uh, coal exploitation and export, but today he changed his mind and he said he's going to carry on the nuclear plants. These kind of things, not right of left, these are important for our recovery and to get out of crisis. And I think that we have to go move beyond and mo move further uh, that, than what's, what's proposed by our colleagues from the north. Habermas talk about the transnationalization of democracy, and I think this is very important. We have to talk about democracy in Europe. I think that the value of the European Union, of democracy, of what our ancestors did in the past, well, all this is reflected in the people uh, demonstrating in Paris, people who have died in the Mediterranean Sea, sea. the capacity of our young people uh, uh, that can have a future in their own country. I think that if we can, our proposals, as I said, are good, but if we can invest in the European dream, I think that we can provide an answer and try to fight back those who want new borders, not just physical, but among people and cultures. I think that we can show that this kind of recipes can be a winning uh, recipes, but new borders preventing people from work, um, preventing the cultural uh, exchange is not a recipe that is going to be successful or is going to um, get out, get us out of the crisis. And I think that we left parties have to say this because this is green and this is leftist. And now I would like to invite Yanis Milos because he is going to tell us something how we can win. He's going to show us how we can win. Στις 26 Ιανουαρίου, ένας αστεροειδής θα περάσει κοντά στη Γη. Ο ήλιος θα ανατύλει στις 7 και 34. Τα μαγαζιά και οι τράπεζες θα ανοίξουν μετά τις 8. Οι γονείς θα συνεχίσουν να ανησυχούν για τους βαθμούς των παιδιών, αλλά καμία οικογένεια δεν θα ανησυχεί να βρεθεί στον δρόμο. Στις 26 Ιανουαρίου, οι μηχανές παίρνουν εμπρός και η κοινωνία στέκεται όρθια. Αρχίζουμε την πραγματική διαπραγμάτευση. Χαράζουμε νέα πορεία μαζί με την Ευρώπη. Στις 26 Ιανουαρίου, η Ελλάδα θα είναι μια χώρα με ελπίδα για όλους. ΣΥΡΙΖΑ
Dear comrades and friends, as you very well know, we came here, all the Greeks, we are among you as heralds of good news. Next Sunday, on the 25th of January, we are going to win the elections and form the first left government in our country since the end of the war. Queridos, queridos camaradas, queridos amigos, hemos venido aquí en representación de todos los griegos para daros una muy buena noticia. El próximo 25 de enero vamos a ganar las elecciones por primera vez desde la guerra. Before us lies a very difficult task. We have the duty to combat the humanitarian crisis and the enormous unemployment that extreme austerity policies have caused. Ante nosotros tenemos una obligación. Tenemos que luchar para combatir la crisis humanitaria y el desempleo, una tasa de desempleo enorme impuesta por las extremas políticas de austeridad. We have the duty to guarantee social cohesion, to give people the rights to restore the ability of the working class to bargain collectively with the employers. Es nuestra obligación garantizar la cohesión social, devolver a los pueblos sus derechos, restaurar la capacidad de la clase trabajadora para negociar colectivamente con los empleadores. We have the duty to introduce for the first time a just and redistributive tax system so that the social state will be financed by the ones who can pay. Tenemos la obligación de introducir por primera vez un sistema fiscal redistributivo y justo, de manera que el Estado social sea financiado por aquellos que pueden pagarlo. We have the duty to fight corruption, tax evasion, petroleum product smuggling and to protect the rule, the rule of law. Tenemos la obligación también de luchar contra la corrupción, la evasión fiscal, el contrabando de productos de petróleo y proteger la jurisprudencia. We have the duty to reform the state, to establish transparency, meritocracy and justice. Es nuestra obligación reformar el Estado restablecer la transparencia, la meritocracia y la justicia. After five years of extreme neoliberal austerity, nearly 60% of young Greeks have no job. This means that we have, uh, we will take over the government in a situation of exception in order to put an end to a social disaster. Tras cinco años de políticas extremas de austeridad neoliberal, casi el 60% de los jóvenes griegos carecen de empleo. Esto significa que accederemos al gobierno en una situación excepcional para poder acabar con este desastre social. Prerequisite for the success of our program is the deepening of democracy, the introduction of new participative framework our ability to promote forms of direct democracy. Un prerequisito fundamental para el éxito de nuestro programa es profundizar en el concepto de democracia, la introducción de un nuevo marco participativo y nuestra capacidad de promover formas de democracia directa. In, in order to succeed in our goals, in order to initiate the process of social change, to the benefit of the many, in order to show that a democratic and cohesive Europe is possible, we need the constant support, not only of the Greek social majority, but also of the European peoples, of all left and progressive forces in Europe. 
para conseguir llevar a cabo estos objetivos con éxito, para poder iniciar la introducción del cambio social en beneficio de la mayoría, para poder demostrar que una Europa cohesionada y democrática es posible, necesitamos el apoyo continuo no solamente de la mayoría social griega, sino también de todos los pueblos europeos, de todas las fuerzas de izquierda y progresivas de Europa. We need the unity and the support of the plural left of, of Spain and all other countries all over Europe. Necesitamos la unidad de la izquierda plural de España y del resto de países de toda Europa. Comrades, we count on your support. Our struggle is common. A change in Greece means that the change for all of Europe has begun. Camaradas, contamos con vuestro apoyo. Nuestra lucha es una lucha común. Un cambio en Grecia significa que se ha iniciado también el cambio para toda Europa. Compañeros y compañeras, las elecciones del 25 de enero. Colleagues, the elections on the 25th of January, it's not just a matter of Greece, but affects the future of Europe. All together, we are going to choose social justice or inequality and poverty, democracy or dictatorship of the market. We have to express our unity and our power in front of um, blackmail. We Greeks have to do the first step, have to take the first step in order dreams come true. Because another world it's possible. Because now it's the time of people people united will never be defeated. To the victory always.